What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com. Joining you today on MLK Day 2023 as we remember the life, legacy, and teachings of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during these somewhat turbulent times. On a much lesser note, it's been pretty turbulent at the University of Arkansas, from an entertainment standpoint at least. It's been a wild offseason, and we've got a lot to talk about, whether you're following Razorback football offseason, basketball, you're a recruiting junkie, and we're going to get with Danny West to talk a little bit about recruiting, and we'll get to all that and more on today's episode of Hog Sports Live. And before we get started, I want to remind you there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live and also YouTube. Be sure to give us a thumbs up or a like on both those channels. Follow the Facebook page. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done so already. And interact with the video. Leave a comment. And also, I want to thank everybody for jumping in on Apple Podcasts. We had a long break like 31 days uh, from getting any Apple podcast reviews and you guys answered the call and I really appreciate that. So thanks for those uh, giving us the five-star review on Apple Podcasts and if you haven't done so take a moment to do that please. Also available on Spotify, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast and hog sports is just one dollar for your first month at hawgsports.com. It's always a good time to jump in at hog sports because there's always something going on with Arkansas sports. It's always something. And the latest thing is Kendall Browse's name popping up again, this time for the offensive coordinator job at TCU as we just went with the roller coaster at Mississippi State. Something that didn't see, seem as plausible just because it didn't make sense, didn't add up. We weren't hearing a whole lot from our end of things. Uh, this one does seem like it might have a little bit more teeth. Now, we'll see. We know Jimmy Sexton is at the root of all of this when it comes to the inner workings of college football coaching hires. So this is something to watch, I think, um, from the from the TCU side of things. They certainly feel a level of confidence, and maybe they should. He does have some connections, obviously, with the TCU staff. He's known um, defensive coordinator his, his whole life there, uh, Joe Gillespie, basically his whole life. Malcolm Kelly coached with him at TCU, the wide receivers coach there. So there are some connections with Kendall Browse. It still doesn't add up to me. It still doesn't make enough sense, but I don't know. I feel like I hear a little bit more that, hey, maybe this could be a possibility. So we'll see how it shakes out. It seems like, I mean, and I know people are frustrated with hearing Kendall Browse's name for every single offensive coordinator opening that comes open. Uh, it was Miami last year, Mississippi State this year, now TCU. If you have good coaches, Sometimes that's just, you, you love to hear, you know, just a shutdown, like, you know, I'm done with it and let's sign this new contract and everything. But if you have good coaches, that's just kind of how it is. Barry Odom had the same thing happening at him, you know. Obviously didn't have a lot of success at Arkansas last year. But, you know, every year with Barry Odom, it was a new job, a new opportunity that was out there. So it's just kind of the territory. If you're going to have good coaches, you're going to have people come after them. It's a lot better to have people come after your coaches than to have nobody coming after your coaches okay so we'll see how it shakes out we're set, certainly following it certainly got our eyes on it there was a lot of stuff that seemed to be going on last night what does my gut tell me if you ask me what's my gut that he ends up staying at Arkansas I guess would be my gut just because I feel like we've been through this before and that's kind of how it ends up You'd like to be done with it at this point. <laughs> Last night was supposed to be family movie night, and it wasn't. Kendall Browse, I blame you. <laughs> so we'll see how this story develops, but uh, yeah. Arkansas remains ranked in the AP Top 25. I know a lot of you are going how. I think uh, 11, 11 of the Top 25 teams lost over the weekend, so that's how they remain in. Uh, this is not an NCAA tournament team. The team out on the floor right now, it's not an NCAA tournament team until they figure some things out. Now, the thing with Eric Musselman, and I would say to anybody who's jump off the Eric Musselman bandwagon, uh, what are you doing right now? He's earned, he's earned a little bit of leeway. We've seen this happen the last few years. They start off slow, and yeah, you'd love to see them start off fast in SEC play, but they just haven't. And they start off slow, they figure some things out, they put it together, boom, NCAA Tournament Elite Eight. I would argue the last two teams that have made it to the Elite Eight weren't necessarily Elite Eight teams caliber-wise. I feel like they overachieved. 
And I think this will probably end up happening with this team. We'll see if Nick Smith is able to return. Nick Smith obviously changes the whole dynamic of the team. But right now, they've got a team that actually shot pretty well against Vanderbilt. But the problem that happened with Vanderbilt, they gave up 97 points. They started talking a little trash. You got some immaturity on that side. You know, really, I mean, if you want to break it down after the seven free throws that Arkansas got with the technical fouls and all that stuff, and, you know, Nick's uh, Anthony Black doing a cry face over to the Vanderbilt bench, you know, kind of started taunting at him, and Vanderbilt finished it. You taunted him, and they finished the job and in convincing fashion. Arkansas has lost three in a row. It's just not – they're just not – They just don't have it all together. Obviously, you lose Nick Smith. You lose Trevon Brazil, two guys that you build everything around, and they're gone. And hopefully Nick Smith is coming back at some point. But the team that's out there right now, they're just – they're not good enough. They're not – they haven't gelled. They they can't – usually can't shoot. They actually shot pretty well from three-point range. I think they were like 38% in the last game. They They can't shoot free throws. I mean, they just got a lot of problems. And, you know, Joseph Pinion can shoot threes, but he is not ready yet. I mean, I think that Pinion will, you know, learn some tricks here and there and become a better defender. But right now, they just – they go right at him. And it's just – it just completely offsets any offensive game that he brings right now. Um, they're just not a great three-point shooting team. They, they, they've just got a lot of issues. And my gut tells me that they'll figure something out They'll figure out a way to get this team. I don't know. I, I just, based on history, same thing with Kendall Bryles. Why my gut would tell me that, you know, I think Kendall ends up staying at Arkansas. My gut tells me that Musselman and staff are going to figure things out with the basketball team and pull it together. Now, are they going to be an Elite Eight team? It doesn't look like it. I mean, they look like a team that may, if they make the NCAA tournament, they're getting bounced. And they got Missouri coming up. And Missouri's pretty darn good. And it's at Columbia. And Missouri just played two road games and lost both of them. And they return home. This is Wednesday at 8 o'clock in Columbia, Missouri. I mean, this is, I don't say it's a must win for both teams, but for Arkansas, it definitely feels must winish to stop a skid. But. Uh, Missouri lost at Texas A&M, 82-64. Lost at Florida, 73-64 on Saturday. And now return home to face it, Arkansas. Yeah, just they're just not playing very well. I mean, Anthony Black's not consistent from three-point range, but he was two of four. Only two of four free throws. The problem wasn't offense last game. That wasn't the problem. They they put up 84 points. The problem was that the defense, I mean, completely – it's just like, ole, get to the basket. Vanderbilt shot lights out in the second half. I don't know. And I didn't mean just to, like, bag on Joseph opinion. That wasn't my intent because there's a lot of – I mean – Jordan Walsh isn't playing. Jordan Walsh was 0 of 6, 0 of 3 from three-point range. He has not been playing well. And I don't know what that is. He's a McDonald's All-American, but he's just not playing well. Just a freshman. Anthony Black has slipped. Ricky Council has slipped. And a lot of that is teams, you know, understanding what a guy does and adjusting and – Losing some other weapons, you you know, you can just focus on those guys. Devo Davis actually played pretty well the last game, but he hasn't been shooting very well at all. I mean, he has not – his numbers are pretty pretty down overall. But he's five for five from the free throw line. They didn't lose the game because of Devo Davis. Curtis has a nice breakdown on everything going on with Arkansas basketball, the resume. If you haven't checked out Hall Hoops Live with Curtis Wilkerson, he also does uh, sometimes after games, he'll do a stand-up after the game outside the arena or in the arena. Uh, but he also does a Hall Hoops Live show. It's on the same YouTube – excuse me, yeah, sorry. It's on the same Facebook page, same podcast channels, but a different YouTube page. You'll need to search for Hog Hoops Live, H-A-W-G Hoops Live. 
But he breaks down the whole resume, resume, their current net rankings 27th, their SEC rankings 4th, average opponent net is 114, strength of schedule, net strength schedule is 53, breaks down all the quad one through quad four wins. So I encourage you to go to Hog Sports and check out Curtis's latest breakdown of everything going on. Let's flip over to recruiting real quick, and we're about, we're about to bring in Danny West. So if you're listening, Danny, we're coming to you here in a second. But Shamar Easter reaffirmed his commitment to Arkansas, so – Really nice to see that. Um, if you remember, obviously, with Dow Loggins moving on to uh, South Carolina to take the offensive coordinator job there, Easter didn't sign in the early period. He took a visit to South Carolina, but he reaffirmed uh, that he is all Razorback now. So that's good. He'll sign on February. What is it? February 3rd? When is National Signing Day? It's the first Wednesday in February. My calendar won't come up. Here it comes. All right. First Wednesday. is that, That's February 1st. So February 1st. And obviously, you know, they've got contact period and stuff going on now. So there's players that aren't enrolling. School starts tomorrow. Today's MLK Day, obviously. They always have today off. And then school starts tomorrow. And I guess that will include Tyrone Broden. Tyrone Broden's the latest transfer commitment. 6'7", 210-pound wide receiver. Went public with his commitment on Sunday. He had over 500 yards receiving last year and the year before that. Nice big target. They brought in three pretty intriguing wide receivers. Isaac Tesla. Actually, I asked him, Tesla is how you say it, Tesla. I was like, I've been butchering your name. Every time I hear it, it's said five different ways. I know it's not Tesla. It's Tesla. Uh, And Andrew Armstrong, three nice additions at wide receiver for Arkansas. I still think they could probably use another one. I don't think it's necessary, absolutely. They've got nine. But Broden committed. Uh, They also had Juwan Mitchell. Juwan Mitchell is a linebacker from Tennessee who's played quite a bit in his career. He he was originally from uh, New Jersey, went to Butler Community College, played at Texas, played and contributed there, started several games. Uh, Same thing at Tennessee, had a shoulder injury last year or year before last, played last year, um, and now is in the transfer portal. 6'1", 235 linebacker. I personally think they could use another veteran linebacker. The numbers are fine at linebacker, but I just think they need more another veteran guy. So I would add an extra on top of what you would normally need there. All right, I want to get to Danny real quick. And after after I'm done with Danny, we're going to get into uh, scholarship distribution, needs through the transfer portal, and things like that. For those of you who don't follow Danny, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. He's been with us for a number of years, probably 12 or 13, I don't know, a long time. And does a fantastic job covering Razorback recruiting, best guy in the country covering team recruiting. Danny, how you doing, man? What's up, man? I'm hanging in there. Oh, just looking at this roster a little bit. We've discussed Kendall Browse a little bit and his courtship with TCU. We've discussed the basketball team, and we're diving into a little bit of recruiting right now. Uh, uh, any 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 late breaking news or anything like that that we might have missed? Seems like every time I hop on air, there's something. Not yet, but there's potential for that. You know, Jawan Mitchell was one of the the uh, visitors over the weekend transfer linebacker from Tennessee. He was at ten, uh, Texas uh, prior to that. Man, he's kind of had a roller coaster, a long, long road through college. You know, Butler mm-hmm. County Community College. I think he committed to Rutgers at one point, decommitted, committed to Minnesota, ended up at Texas, spent two years, went into the portal, backed out of the portal, went back into it, ended up at Tennessee for two years, and now back in it again. So, you know, kind of keeping an eye on him. I could see that one uh, making a final decision at any any given moment. Could be today, could be mm-hmm. tomorrow, but kind of got our eyes peeled on that one. Nothing yet, but, you know, it's it's shaping up to be a pretty busy week. Of course, uh, commitment side, uh, Wednesday, I think, is the final day of this 45-day window here. So mm-hmm. kind of looking forward to that. But, um, you yep. know, players have until Friday to enroll, so could be a surprise or two. You never mm-hmm. know. Maybe they snuck somebody in here, but – I uh, got the contact period going on, so visits technically, you know, and not technically, it can happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can still host guys right now. So, 
what else happened? Shamar Easter yesterday, of course, yeah. reaffirmed his commitment. Finally, some some good news, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Uh, besides the transfer committed guy from uh, Bowling Green, Tyrone Broden, obviously a big time, another big time wide receiver pickup there. So it's been busy. And then Saturday's coming up, another big junior day. I shouldn't say another. It's going to be their first big one. This past weekend really wasn't, you know, they had a handful of notable guys, but uh, with no basketball game on campus this past week, I think they've kind of circled the 21st, the upcoming, this upcoming Saturday is Mm -hmm. their next, uh, the next big one. And we've got several names already on the board, uh, several four stars coming in. So yeah, it's been a little bit busy trying to balance it all, but um, you know, February 1st can't get here soon enough. How are you doing, Danny? Mentally, I'm, uh, not great. <laughs> Just being honest with you, not great. Why did they pick but, the eighteenth? I mean, like the yeah, day after know. school starts. Like tomorrow's the seventeenth, so school Why starts. Why do they do anything, Trey? <laughs> they want just a nice forty-five. They just felt like that was a good number. Yeah, so what does guess, that fall man. on? I don't, kind of weird, but I guess. But yeah, that's coming up, and uh, I mean, I, I just stopped counting the days mm-hmm. until you know last night. I happened to look. I said it's got to be getting close, right? So mm-hmm. I did the whole dates since this date calendar thing, the mm-hmm. uh, calculator. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I was like, forty-two. All right, we're sneaking up on this yep, thing. Now. Sneaking up on it. You know, Juwan Mitchell. I, I this guy's uh, intriguing to me just because they need a veteran at linebacker mm-hmm. with all the youth that they have. Uh, but this guy played, you know, pretty pretty good bit. I uh, played 11 yep. games as a sophomore his first year at Texas after coming from uh, – and started five games uh, after coming from Butler Community College. Started eight of ten games at Texas in 2020. And then uh, he transferred to um, – transferred to Tennessee and played in three right. games, one start. He, had, he, he redshirted. He had a shoulder injury. Um, and then played a good bit last year, averaged 6.6 tackles per game last uh, five ball games last year. So he's got a lot of experience. I think this is the type of guy that they need. I think that they've got some good young talent. Mm-hmm. Uh, young linebackers always scare me a little bit, though. Um, yeah. But I think they've got some good young talent, so it would be nice to have a one one veteran guy that's, you know, he's got one year of eligibility left. So uh, I think that he probably fits the bill of, of what they're looking for. Yeah, I think so. It's kind of been the trend, uh, really, for all defensive targets. I think the corner from from Baylor is probably about the youngest one I've seen, really. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of defensive guys, and um, even he's played quite a bit. So, yeah, I think they look for big bodies and big bodies of work, and it's it's got to be one or the other. Typically, yeah. if there's a lineman who you know he hasn't played a whole lot, he better have a really big body. <laughs> but, you know, if it's a veteran guy, you feel really good about that, especially with Antonio Greer already committed and signed mm-hmm. with Arkansas. We kind of forget about him. It was a kind of in that, that after Christmas, before New Year's time, you mm-hmm. know, it gets a little bit awkward there. You can't keep up with everything during that stretch. And so it was a little bit quiet on that front. But I think he's a guy you, you probably like throwing in there, too. Uh, he's plenty, plenty experienced himself, uh, red shirt going to be a super senior next year and and so would Juwan so throwing quite a bit of experience in there to go with the guys that you talked about man I you can't say enough about Chris Paul Jr. Mm-hmm. at this point I think he's next you know they've boy we went a long time there Trey talking about linebackers and just Arkansas's lack of, of difference makers there and man they've really been on a, a, a tear when you think about the last few years so yeah Looks like Chris Paul might be next. And then Jordan Crook and Manny Powell, man, they, they look the part too. So, mm-hmm. um, sorry, I got a message there making sure it wasn't anything important. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to like that linebacker room. That's, that's one thing you can say about Michael Scherer. Before he got out of here, I think he he went a long way in fixing that thing. So, uh, you know, from a talent and size mm-hmm. standpoint, everybody's bigger now. I got some more linebacker questions for you. Can you guess? There are two of them. Two uh, yeah, they look alike. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Mike and Andrew. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Still keeping an eye on it, man. I've, I'm halfway expecting something. If it's going to happen, I would say it's probably going to be this weekend. But man, there's been so many moving parts. Uh, you know, in terms of the coaching staff, it seems like if somebody's not moving on, there's rumors of them moving on. Mm-hmm. You know, and it seems like it hasn't been settled for a while. So a lot of that plays into. You know, especially the transfer portal. Uh, I know everybody's like me. You're kind of sitting back going, yeah, I, I like all these receivers. I like Jacoby and the offensive linemen, the Baylor guys. But there is a long way to go on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. 
and you you start to question when that might happen and so much of it i think was due to some untimely transition but at some point man you gotta everybody that's in there needs to either decide they want to stay there and and get it going and uh or get going man I, you've kind of you're past the first of the year mm-hmm. you know when you think about kb and some of the the, room, the latest flavor of the week this week i guess tcu being when you think about a guy like michael hawkins coming in this weekend four-star quarterback out of frisco emerson now he's transferred from allen you know he just visited ou last weekend he's supposed to be up here this weekend and uh, he's going to decide on the 31st. And, and here we are again talking about more rumors. And that's just, you know, at some point you got to put it to bed, man, and get, get to recruiting. Yeah, absolutely. Danny West joining us. Again, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7. You do need a VIP subscription at Hog Sports if you want to read most of his content over there, uh, recruiting information. Yeah, Danny. I mean, it's uh, it's been pretty wild with the uh, with the Kendall Browse stuff, obviously. And you mentioned Michael Hawkins coming in, and really, I mean, with the situation at quarterback, they need they're going to have to bring in two quarterbacks next year because most likely KJ's gone. Kate Fortin, who I don't know if this has been reported out there. We put it on Hog Sports last week, but I don't know if everybody else has it. But Kate Fortin is going on scholarship he will either be retroactively put on scholarship back to the 2022 class or to the 2023 class if he's 2022 class then i've got them at 74 total scholarship players so they can have 85 so there's a lot of work to be done just at safety alone there's a lot of work to be done they need four safeties yeah so i mean there's there's still plenty of work to be done and there is another transfer portal window i know you're anxiously awaiting that one to open up well, i can't wait one. <laughs> after I'm this so one but it'll be interesting to see that. how how active that one is because i think in a lot of cases you're going to have guys that you know maybe they weren't ready to graduate mm-hmm. or maybe they weren't uh maybe they thought their position would be this role they go through spring drills and it's it's something different but um it could be pretty active. And there's a lot of guys, too, from Georgia that have entered the portal. You know, yeah. just uh, what you would ex- – you know, there were they had two guys at, because everybody wants to ride the national championship, obviously, before they mm-hmm. enter the portal. But lately there have been a, a number of guys. And I was talking with Randy and Rick on Drive Time Sports, and Rick's like, take all of them. Everyone ev- – <laughs> offer every single one of them. <laughs> yeah, bring them all. Is there any good yeah. – is there any positive news on, on that front? I mean, obviously you hear Georgia and a guy from Georgia. You hear Georgia and, a lot. You hear Florida State a lot with Coach Woodson coming over. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, uh, obviously T. Will coming from UCF. Yeah. Obviously the, uh, the Harris twins had some connections there. So, you know, so much of it is difficult because – People may not believe this or not, but I've gone all year not knowing any of these dudes, and suddenly I've got to get mm-hmm. to know them in a in a two day and get them to trust me and tell me everything there is to know. That's hard, man. Yeah. So a lot of that, you know, it seems that the trend has been, especially for transfers, is to try to keep everything quiet. Mm-hmm. And I think that's interesting. You know, so many of these guys, well, it seems like they're really in love with all the attention and the spotlight as high school recruits, and then suddenly. They've been there and done it, and I think some of them figure out, you know, I don't need this guy to write the story for me. You know, some mm-hmm. of them feel that way, and they they won't even talk about it. So you deal with some of that. Now, not all of them. I'd, I'd say that's the uh, minority probably. Uh, most of them have been awesome to work with. But there is a lot of secrecy, I guess you call it. So uh, it has been a little bit blurry, especially with all the, the coaching transition. But still keeping an eye on some of those Georgia guys, the Florida State guys. And then, of course, you know, you mentioned the spring period. I think it's a roll of the dice, but if there's anything I'd be willing to bet on right now, it'd be plenty of bodies in the transfer portal in the spring. I mean, it's just the way it is now. So I think it's a safe bet, but obviously I think you'd feel a lot better having these guys in the books and and ready to go through winter conditioning and and spring ball. But Mm -hmm. you think about some of the two years ago, they brought in a heck of a transfer class, especially on the D line. And all of that happened after spring. I mean, it was summertime guys. So, um, yeah, they're, you know, it's a different format now, but I, I do think there's still going to be plenty of options in there. And there better be because, man, what did you say there? They've got 11 spots left? Yep. That's quite I, a bit. I got them at 35 on offense, 36 on defense, and three specialists. Well, at least they're balanced. <laughs> yep. All right, Danny. Well, I appreciate you, brother. Yeah. All right, man. You got it, man. We'll All right, everybody. You. That's Danny West. Again, follow him at Danny West 24-7 on Twitter. He's the Hog Sports recruiting analyst and 
there's never a dull time. There's never a bad time to sign up at Hog Sports with the way things are going now with this off season and stuff. There's not, there's no breaks anymore. So you need a Hog Sports subscription if you want to stay up to date with all things Razorbacks. As I mentioned, I've got Arkansas at 74 total scholarship players, not including Cade Fortin, who will go on scholarship either to the 2022 class or the 2023 class. I'll seek clarity on that. Uh, the coaches were all away at the AFCA, um, and so not able to get any clarity on that. But Cade Fortin is going on scholarship either retroactive to 2022 or 2023. So we'll find out. I do know that they have at least one spot open for the 2022 class, but that doesn't mean that they didn't fill that with some other player or something like that. So we'll see. I want to get into a little bit of needs with this team. Arkansas's remaining transfer portal needs. We go over this, I guess probably every week we've gone over it a little bit. They've got four quarterbacks technically with Cade Fortin, so they're fine there. They're going to need to add – two quarterbacks in next year's class because you're going to lose Fortin because he's out of eligibility and almost certainly K.J. Jefferson's going to be gone after this year and test the NFL waters. So you're going to need to bring in a high school guy and an older guy because you want to have a three deep plus one at quarterback. you got to have competition there. Obviously, we saw some of the issues that they had due to a lack of competition in the past – uh, this past year. Running back, they're fine. No needs at running back. They've got five running backs. They're distributed pretty equally. A senior, a couple juniors, a senior with another year also. A couple juniors, sophomore, freshman. It's fine. Wide receiver, they're fine. They could use one more. I mean, even if you go through and you say, and my policy has always been, you add a three deep plus one. So, wide receiver, they use 11 personnel, so that means three wide receivers are on the field. So, you need nine wide receivers to have a three deep plus one, ten. So, even if you do it like that all the way through on both sides of the ball, it still ends up with like 80 scholarships, okay? And that includes three special teams, guys. You end up with about 80 scholarships. So, you've got five to play with here and there. Uh, but wide receiver, I, I think they need to add one more tight end. Technically, they're good. This would be one of the areas, because they got four scholarship tight ends, this would be one of the areas that maybe they consider using one of those five extra spots, however you want to put it, on tight end, just because they need a little bit of a boost, in my opinion, in terms of experience in that room. They've got Luke Has, terrific talent. Shamar Easter, terrific talent. Tyrus Washington, who I think probably is the guy who combines mostly – the aspect of playmaking ability and some experience. Just played in five games as a freshman last year, but still he's pretty young and inexperienced. you got Nathan Bax, who has a lot of good qualities, not necessarily a playmaker, though, in the passing game. So it would be nice to add another tight end. Uh, Kane Barong out of Notre Dame, it looked like things were moving really good there. Uh, that's kind of been back and forth a little bit. We're monitoring the situation Georgia's got a few tight ends that have entered the transfer portal. Obviously, you'd think there's maybe some connection there with Sam Pittman and, uh, and other coaches on staff also. So maybe that's thing to, a thing to watch there. But Kane Barong seemed like he would have been a guy that would have fit as an older guy, not a guy that's like played a whole bunch, but he brings some maturity to the room. And, you know, and that's both, you know, mentally and physically being in college for a little while now. So we'll see. Technically, the numbers are fine at tight end. I'd like to see him add one more veteran guy. Offensive line, they're at 14 scholarship players. They've got some other offensive linemen who are walk-ons that they feel really good about, like Josh Street, for example. But they could definitely use another scholarship guy. 15 is the minimum that you should have on scholarship on the offensive line. That's, that's the bottom line, 15 to 17 offensive linemen. Defensive tackle. I think they need a couple of defensive tackles. I've got them at five scholarship defensive tackles, Torian Carter, Marcus Miller, Cameron Ball, Nico Davier, and Ian Giffrard. Okay. Um, I think Nico has a really bright future as a younger guy. Obviously, Cam Ball is just going to be a redshirt sophomore this year. So, a couple of nice younger uh, guys, Torian Carter coming back from an ACL tear, Marcus Miller – is going to be a redshirt senior, has not played a whole lot in his career. And Jafrard's obviously a freshman. They need a couple more guys because we're going to see them run more of a 4 2 5 look moving forward. So if you're going to run a 4 2 5, it's two defensive tackles, three deep. That gets you to six plus one is seven. I've got them with five scholarship guys right now. So add a couple of defensive tackles. 
if you can find those guys. Defensive end, I think they're in good shape there. I've got them at zero needs. I've got them with eight scholarship defensive ends right now. Now, that includes Eric Gregory. So, if Eric Gregory moves to defensive tackle, which I think he should in that look, when you're talking about a four-man front, usually your ends are going to be, you know, strictly speed rush guys versus, you know, if you have a three-man front, then usually you have, you know, kind of one speed guy and then two bigger guys. Um, Eric Gregory's already 6'4", 303, I think right now is what he's listed at. So he's already got the size to play on the interior and has done that in his career, Didn't hasn't really done it last year and was also uh, injured toward the end of the year with a knee. But if they move Gregory, then that still gives you your three deep plus one at defensive end, and it moves you a little bit closer on defensive tackle. It puts you at six defensive tackles. And in that case, then I think we talk, you know, you need to add one. But I say add as many defensive linemen, big defensive linemen as you can find out there and still stay under the 85. Linebacker, one, we talked about uh, Juwan Franklin, who would be – or excuse me, not Juwan Franklin, Juwan Mitchell. It would be nice to get him. Uh, Juwan Mitchell, we talked about him. I lost my page. Here we go. Uh, we talked about him a little bit. And he would obviously fit the need. They've got eight linebackers, which obviously fills your – you know, if you got two linebackers and you need seven, so they've got eight, so they're at plus one, really. But three of these guys are freshmen. Alex Sanford, Bragg Spence, uh, Carson Dean, Caden Henley's just a redshirt freshman, and then Manny Powell and Jordan Crook just have one year under their belt. Both those guys played and didn't redshirt last year. Chris Paul's pretty, uh, you know, pretty young, too. He's just a redshirt sophomore. And then you got Antonio Greer. So it would be nice to add another veteran linebacker with this group. I think it's a really good-looking group. Maybe overall one of the better groups that they've had in a while, um, top to bottom. I mean, obviously, they've had some really good talents last year with Grant Morgan. Or when I want to say last year, I mean 2021, with Grant Morgan and um, Hayden Henry and uh, Bumper Pool. And then, of course, last year, 2022, with Drew Sanders, Chris Paul, Bumper Pool. I think this is a nice looking young group. Maybe hasn't done and not as accomplished as those other guys, but I, I see some promise. I really think Manny Powell has a, you know, Chris Paul, too, uh, excuse me, not Chris Paul, but uh, Jordan Crook too, but I think Manny Powell, he's put together really well. 6'3, 230 something, really will strike you. Cornerback, I think they need a cornerback. I've got, and with cornerback and safety, you have to remember that you're going to draw from the nickel spot from these. So, you need probably a surplus there. But I've got him at nine corners. I'd like to see him add another. Safety, we talked about that. Got him at six safeties. They need to add another safety. And also, cornerback, we'll watch the Quincy McAdoo, see what happens there. If he stays at corner or moves to wide receiver, I would personally, not that that matters at all to Quincy, but I'd like to see him at corner. I don't think that you move a guy, unless he's going to be a starter at wide receiver, it – doesn't make a lot of sense to move him when he's a starter at corner. You don't move a guy who's a starter at one spot to be a backup at another spot, in my opinion. At least that's what Houston Nutt always told me. They need four safeties. I've got them at six. They need four more. That's a lot of safeties. Anthony Brown being the latest exit, who is – what is he off to Purdue, I think? Yeah. Specialists, there's no need for a specialist this year. There's no need for specialists next year. Max Fletcher's a sophomore. Cam Little's a junior. I say that. Max Fletcher needs to become more consistent. Cam Little's a junior. Eli Stein's a sophomore. 35 offense, 36 defense, three specialists, 74 total. That's what I've got him at. And so plenty of more work to do in, in recruiting. I've got a projected depth chart you can check out at hog sports you do need a vip subscription but i go three deep to four deep no i've gone four deep at a lot of spots <laughs> but i generally go three deep at every spot danny west has a nice monday breakdown also that you can read on hog sports where uh, just coaches hitting the road some of the guys that they may visit all of that prospect day, a list of uh, – he's got about, what, eight players on here right now. 
and we're still adding to the list. But he mentioned Michael Hawkins as one guy that's coming in. But uh, some 2024s, 2025s coming in for prospect day. I think they have the contact period where coaches can go out on the road also. I think that ends on the 29th. So they've got a few days to go out and visit pros, uh, prospects. All right. We've got a little bit of time here, so we're going to get to some questions. How about that? One last time, plenty of ways to watch and listen. Always tune in on Facebook Live. If you have not followed the page on Facebook, Live, or on Facebook be sure to do so. Become one of, I think we're pushing 90,000 or something. Something like that follows. So be uh, be one of many thousand Razorback fans to follow the page on Facebook Live. We put all of our free content there. Of course, stream this show live there. Also on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube page. Look at this. I got this little graphic. Subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos and leave us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere else you can think of to find favorite podcast, Hog Sports, just $1 right now for your first month at hawgsports.com. Okay. Are we glitchy at all? Uh, Bump the thing up to 1080p. So, I don't know if we're handling it. I usually run stream it at 720, but I was watching myself on the big screen just checking how things looked out, and I don't know, it looked a little pixelated to me. So I bumped it up to 1080p just to test it out this time. I don't think that my face needs to be in the highest quality, high definition 4K. I think we're okay. All right. If playing the defenders gave up 60 points, uh, let's see, we've got a lot of comments. A lot of comments. Landon Montgomery says, one point everyone is missing with NIL are the fans. No one makes any money if you lose the fan base, and it's like becoming harder and harder to get behind your team. No con- I do think that that could be a problem long term. I think there's definitely the potential for fans to just get fed up with it. And if you don't think that things can change, if you don't think another sport can come in and replace college football, you need to look at history. I've said this many times, but it wasn't that long ago that boxing – Horse racing and baseball, those were the sports. Not NFL, not NBA, not college football. It can change. Look at uh, UFC. UFC wasn't anything not that long ago. It feels like UFC is more popular than boxing everywhere I turn. Walsh has lost his confidence in his shot. It feels like it. Lane New says, are there any recruits at Arkansas is recruiting that would be a splash commit on the level of Drew Sanders and Hazelwood? I don't think I spelled that right. Uh, no, you misspelled Hazelwood. Uh, Lane, I don't know that – like, both of those guys came out of the transfer portal. I don't know that there's a guy that they have committed right now that you're like, this guy's the next Drew Sanders. They've got some really good, steady players, I think, in the transfer portal. Now, we have to, we have to also understand that they – Went eight for eight last year. I trust their evaluations when it comes to transfer portal. They nailed every single transfer that they got in last year. They nailed them. And I don't feel like there's the same flash level with Jaden Hazelwood, Drew Sanders, uh, but they've got some really good guys coming in. I think some guys that are definitely going to help them. Joseph B. Reynolds says, KB gone. Not as of now, but we're monitoring it. Doyle Bulger says, what have you heard about the new strength coach, about the new strength staff? Um, he has brought some guys in. I know he brought a guy in from Georgia. Uh, so they're still in the high, in the process, I think, of, of filling that staff out. Uh, ben Souders is the first strength coach I've talked to in three years. I, I, I don't know why that took so long, but um, it was nice to be able to talk to him. I've seen him working out with the guys, the injured guys over on the sides during practice, during bowl practices and stuff. He apparently likes to work out with the team and stuff, so they needed to change up there. I mean, we I, I talked about Arkansas struggles at the goal line a lot this season, and I think a lot of people assumed that I was just talking about Kendall Browse play calling, and I don't like Trey Knox lining up under center when you have K.J. Jefferson who can line up under center, but – um, I think they were getting kind of desperate, and I think a big problem 
with Arkansas last year at the goal line wasn't necessarily the schemes. It was the offensive line was not as strong at the end of the season as they were at the beginning of the season. And they had to make a change there, and that falls on the strength staff. Where the areas Pittman still wants to address through the portal, I think we covered that. There's an obvious need at safety and defensive interior possibly, depending on what they do with Eric Gregory. The height, size of the wide receiver should pay dividends of the red zone. Yeah, you've gone 6'7", 210 with Broden. Tesla is 6'4", 215, I think. And Andrew Armstrong is like 6'4", also 6'5". If Browse leave, do you have any fear of losing KJ or any other big offensive contributors in this landscape? Then maybe. <laughs> um, I will say this, the transfer portal window closes in two days. So. <laughs> but I would hope that doesn't happen with KJ, no matter what Kendall Browse uh, decides. Doyle Barker says, any word? Wait, Landon Montgomery said, how does this transfer class rank nationally? I think there's – there. not everybody's been re-ranked, but they're probably, I think, right around 22 or 23, I think, right now. Last year, I think they finished 10th. And last year, I think they underrated a lot of guys, just looking back on it. I actually went back and re-ranked all those guys. That story's on Hawk Sports. Any word on the tight end for Notre Dame? We talked about that. Chris McWilliams says, is Pittman looking for more bodies on the OLDL? Yes, Yes, they need to address both of those. Joey Moses says he's tired of hearing about Browse. Again, you know, that's that's part of it. If he wants to go to TCU, then let him go. That's part of having quality coaches is other schools are going to pursue them. That's just – it's way better to have that. I promise you it's way better to have other schools interested in your coach than um, the other way around, nobody wanting them. So you don't want to go out and be like, well, we got to find somebody nobody wants. I'm tired of this. Joey Moses says he doesn't like the conditioning the last couple years and sings every game at halftime don't make any changes based on what happened in the first half. A lot of talks about OLDL. Colton Smith says, hey, Trey, is it time for a new special teams coach? Seems like every time we line up for a punt, there's a flag. Special teams has not been exemplary. It's been overall, top to bottom, it's been, I don't know, maybe last year I would say it's been a little subpar. And a lot of it's punting, you know. Um, I think the year before it was actually pretty good overall. Um, Scott Fountain's a really good recruiter also. That shouldn't go unmentioned, but he is one of the top recruiters on the staff also. All right, everybody. Nice weather today. 68 degrees outside. So I wish I could go out and enjoy that. But, no, I'm going to sit here and see what happens with Kendall Browles. <laughs> Come on, Kendall. Let us know one way or the other. I understand. I mean, it's it's just part of it. And it's unfortunate that it's the off season is – it's crazy how you go from – First of all, this is how college football for me breaks down. Like, I start off in August. August is probably my busiest month because just the way that we cover fall camp, okay? And it's everything's new and there's so much interest and stuff, and it's six days a week. Six, they, have, they practice six days a week all through fall camp. So, August is really busy. The season actually is a little bit, it's a little bit easier. It's not as intense. Um, it's still very busy and you got to be a lot of places, but it's not as, you know, all the time. So, uh, and, but then, but for the coaches, obviously and the team and the players, it's very intense. They're in it, you know, playing games and all this stuff. And then right after that, you get a four day dead period, which you meet with all your players. And then you're dumped right into a 45 day transfer portal window. That is utter chaos. Arkansas has had 25 players, 25 scholarship players, and that include Jackson Wooder, who was a retroactive scholarship to 2021. 25 scholarship players enter the transfer portal. And then you got to fill the roster. You got to have visitors. You got recruiting. You got coaching changes. It's just, it's a lot to come out of the season and then just get dumped. That's how, because that's how it is. It's a wheelbarrow and you just dumped into December. 
That's a lot. And I know these guys are making millions of dollars and, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars for assistant coaches, millions of dollars for head coaches. I just saw myself on delay doing that. It looks kind of ridiculous. Please don't make a gif out of that. So, anyway, it's a lot. And we're going to be following all of it at Hog Sports because that's what we do. As Danny West always says, it's not hard work. We just work hard at it. And we certainly appreciate everybody for taking in our free content, the free users out there, the casual fans out there who just like to take in the free stuff that we put out out of press conferences and things like that. For the more in-depth diehard fans, our VIP subscribers who really want to know the inner workings of the program, know things that are about to happen, things like that, uh, we certainly appreciate you guys above all else for your uh, – your support. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you. Thanks to everybody for tuning into this show. We certainly appreciate you guys as well. All right, everybody. Curtis Wilkerson will be back with you guys next for Hog Hoops Live. Probably do that on Thursday, I would guess. Uh, so check out Curtis on Hog Hoops Live um, and subscribe to that channel on YouTube. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Go to hogsports.com to follow all the latest Razorback news. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com, and we'll catch you next time. 